hacking wireless remotes with radio replay attacks. All that today on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And today on the show, we are going to be using the Yardstick One yes. to hack wireless remotes with replay attacks. Replay attacks. Yes, this is so exciting. Uh, so today we are hacking wireless remotes using RF replay attacks and the Yardstick One. If you guys haven't already checked out last week's episode on Mike Osmond's new hack RF, you know, of hack RF fame, the new dongle for the RF goodness, check it out. Let's follow along. Yeah, it's super, super fun. So basically hacking wireless systems, you already know that it's really easy and it's actually really fun once you get the hang of it. And best of all, there are tons and tons of potentially vulnerable devices out there to audit. So in this new world of Internet of Things, it's seriously like, it's kind of like Wi-Fi auditing back in 2001 all over again. Oh man. It's so much fun. <laughs> and you know, here's the thing, armed with just a little bit of knowledge, some experimentation, we can pull off some pretty simple but very effective attacks against a ton of devices without having to get too nitty gritty into radio theory, which is awesome, by the way, if you do want to go the full software defined radio route, mm -hmm. HackRF is great for that. But the beauty of the Yardstick One is that it's not an SDR in the traditional sense, rather it's a transceiver that speaks the modulation on the frequencies that are used by so many consumer electronics devices. Hmm. So in this episode, we're going to go over, first off, how to gather intel on the device that you want to hack, how to sniff it its wireless signals, we're going to figure out which modulation technique it uses, and then we'll decode this signal, and finally, finally, we'll use RFCAT, which you probably remember from last week, to show you how to program a replay attack with a compatible dongle, like the Yardstick 1, for example. So first off, we're going to gather intel. Right, so the first thing we need to do is actually figure out as much as we possibly can about our device, and you know, thankfully, the US in here, we, we've made it so easy because of the FCC. Um, <laughs> so in, true. Our, in our demo, we're going to be using this. It's a power outlet remote. Let me show you it here. I've got it plugged yeah, in. Let's Basically, get it wide and we'll show this you what it looks is like. essentially. So we have this thing. Yes. It, it just plugs into the power and you can turn on. And it turns on the timer. And Yay. you can turn off. It's it's really stupid simple. Yeah. You can get this on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Um, and what's so great about this is that, uh, you know, with just a simple Google search or a search of the database, we can find out how does it work, you know? And we're going to do just that. So um, let me pull up a browser here. Because if you look at the device right here, let me see. So usually on the back of it, you'll get some kind of FCC ID number, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And in this case, our FCC ID should... It is P-A-G-T-R... Uh-huh. Dash. dash... 009... Okay, dash... Dash 1B is in boy. All right. Or... Beta. Bravo? Bravo. Yes. <laughs> so when you type that into Google... And the very first link, in fact, is to FCC's database, or we could just search the FCC <laughs> database directly. And we get all of the cool stuff, like the photos and the test lab report. And what we're most interested in is the test report. So mm. from here, we'll just go ahead and get a nice little PDF. We can see, like, oh, this is actually you know, made by the Vertant Electronics Dong Gong Co Limited <laughs> out of China. And if we come down here, Let's see, compliance, all the good stuff. There we go. We can actually see that the frequency it speaks at is 315 megahertz. The modulation is ASK, or yeah. amplitude shift keying. Let me make that a little bigger for you. Uh, and basically, it's, you know, it speaks 80 kilohertz wide. It uses an integrated antenna and a 12 volt battery. And in fact, it even shows like under the modulation, we can even see a pretty little picture oh, of the waveforms that we're going to be reproducing here real soon. So now we know where to look for the signal, which is at 314.9020 megahertz, and that it's amplitude shift key or ASK modulation. So using one of my favorite tools, which is the RTL SDR, the Realtek SDR dongle, yay, we can now sniff that signal up for analysis. So to do this, I'm using a program called GQRX, which is on my Kali Linux 2.0 laptop. So here it's simply a matter of tuning the RTL SDR dongle to about 315 megahertz. You can just change the frequency by pressing up and down on the number.
numbers like that in GQRX, change the frequency, which isn't technically an unlicensed ISM band, by the way. No, no, this is actually megahertz. kind of interesting. The FCC has uh, a part 15 for yeah. the short range devices. So <laughs> if you're in Europe, you're going to find more devices that are in the 433 megahertz band, but here 915 9, 15 or 315 a lot. Yeah, about 315. So yeah. with 315 megahertz selected, GQRX, we're going to change the modulation over to AM. So that would be over under mode. You can change it to a bunch of OM. I just choose AM. And then we hit power. Ta -da! And we see a little waterfall star at the bottom. We see our frequencies up at the top. And by the way, there's a nice little FFT plot up at the top, which has nothing to do with Final Fantasy Tactics, just FYI. Yeah, I think it's math or something. <laughs> okay. All the math. So at this point, we can actually capture that signal. And yep. so, so I will be Vanna remote. White here and click the button. Uh, if you want to pull that guy up, because yeah. there we are. Oh, you see that? Yeah, so it shows up right there. And if I press it again, now it's already on, but I'm holding down the on key, and you can yeah, see. Yeah, look at that. Sending it over and over and over. And we have a signal. Similarly, I can press off. And so we can see we're right about in that range. Uh, what we'll want to do next is fine tune our radio to center that signal, and then we'll select it with as much bandwidth as we can and go ahead and record the signal to a WAV file. So Darren, if you want to go ahead and click record again. Yeah. In fact, why don't you go ahead and record that because I have a copy of the WAV file pulled up here on, uh, on my computer that we've previously recorded. Oh, and perfect. so this is kind of awesome. Now that we've actually uh, recorded this, we can go ahead and identify the signal. And you know, here's the thing. Since we're actually dealing with radio signals, the actual waveforms, rather than like digital packets and frames or whatever you're used to with Wi-Fi, we don't have the luxury of using like an analyzer that we yeah. truly love in our hearts, like Wireshark. Rather, in this case, I'm actually just going to go ahead and open this up in an audio editor. I love Audacity. It's free and open source. And so <laughs> this here's, hilarious. here's, this is so great. Check this out. So <laughs> um, if I zoom in, you can see this is just the noise. But then we've got this pattern over and over. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this pattern. Control-1 to zoom in. And uh, let's see. Oh, oh, OK. So you see the same pattern over and over. Right, and so the longer I hold down that button, uh, the more that I see this pattern. And what, we, what we're actually seeing are these pulses. So um, basically, these pulses are what's known as on-off keying. And it is probably Oop. the simplest form of amplitude shift keying modulation. <laughs> uh, and in this case, the pulses are going to represent a binary 1. And then the absence of a pulse is actually going to represent a binary 0. It's sort of like CW or Morse code. Huh. Um, and th this is so great, because on-off keying is pretty simple and effective. It is susceptible to a little bit of noise, which is probably why if I scrub through this file, check this out, if I like zoom out a little bit, you'll see it like plays. There's the byte sequence. There's the sequence. There's the sequence, and it's doing this over and yeah. over again. And you know, the longer that we actually hold down the button on the remote, which makes sense because you know interference. But whatever, just send it a few more times. Yeah. Um, if you're interested, I do have uh, links to further reading on this kind of stuff in the show notes. But. From here, we're going to be able to determine, now that we know the modulation type, we can actually now decode it, yes. which is going to be rather fun. So here we go. Okay. What I'm going to do is zoom right into uh, one of these. Doesn't matter which one. They're all the same. Should I get a notepad open? Go ahead and grab your notepad, grab your oh, pencil hi. and paper, and um, we're going to just scrub through this. Now, this is the entire sequence. Oops, if I can scroll a little bit to the left. Maybe I'll zoom out one more. Um, this is the entire sequence, which it repeats. It's got a little bit of a gap in between when it repeats. And we'll see the first one, the first sequence, we're just going to assume that's a 1. Okay. okay. The next one is the absence. But you'll notice it's twice or maybe even three times as wide. So we're going to say that's three times as wide. Um, and we're going to say that's three zeros. So already, we've got a nibble, which is four bits. We've got 1, 0, 0, 0. The next is going to be, in this case, 1, 1, 1, 0. Then 1, 1, 1, 0. Then 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0. You kind of get where this is going. OK, and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. And so if we do all of this, we get a 64-bit 
length uh, of, of binary, which is kind of awesome. So here's, here's a cool thing. The next thing that we're going to need to do, uh, and this will have to do with our injection later, is we need to convert these binary bits into hex, which will allow us to go ahead and send them off uh, through the air with our FCAT. So I'm going to yeah. pull up a terminal here and make that a little bit bigger for you guys. This is a fun little bash one-liner. If you do a print F and you say uh, in a single tick percent X, and then like I'm going to give it a backslash N to, for a carriage return, and then you put in quotes with a dollar sign, two parens, uh, two pound. Now just put your binary, and in this case it was one zero 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 one 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 zero as the first byte or mm -hmm. eight bits two parens and quote, I'm going to go ahead and get 8E. You're a little cut off there. What did you get? Uh, I get 8E. That should be hopefully ah, visible enough for everybody on the <laughs> intertubes. But uh, yeah, that's a fun little bash one-liner. You know how I do it? I Google a binary <laughs> to hex converter because I'm cool like that and kind of lazy. Oh, look at you with your Google foo. Okay. <laughs> and then I just copy and paste it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now in just a bit, we're going to go ahead and use the yardstick one and RFCAT to replay these hex values. But first, we're going to take a quick break. Domain.com and Dot Club came to Hack5 with a great idea. Build a club all about learning stuff, making things, and having fun. So we've been hosting open houses at the Hack5 warehouse through hackhouse.club. And with the help of Domain.com and .club, we've taken it to the next level with the Quadcopter Arena of Doom. From LAN parties, drone racing, and battle arenas, to 3D printing, software-defined radios, and let's not forget barbecue, hacking is just plain better when it's social. Dot Club gets it, and they are the perfect social domain. Whether it's IRC or clubs in RL, it's all about coming together and having fun. So what better domain to do it than a Dot Club? It's perfect because a Dot Club is universally and globally understood. So if you're looking for the ultimate social domain, consider a Dot Club. So join us this summer in the San Francisco Bay Area and bring your mini quadcopter to the arena for DroneBattle.Club. We're setting up the leaderboard, so show us what you've got. And what's your dot club? Let us know and we'll share it with the Hack5 audience and help spread the word. Get yours over at domain.com slash club. They're only $9.99 a year and there are thousands of great domains available. And be sure to use the coupon code HAK5 to get 15% off and let them know we sent you. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Okay, since we already figured out the frequency, the modulation, and binary or hex equivalent of our device, which is the remote control power switch, yay! The last bit that we need to know is the data rate or how fast each chirp is in the on-off keying that is transmitted. So to do that, we'll just need to select one of the one or zero bits in our audio editor, Audacity. And by the way, we were able to record it with a little red button at the bottom of GQRX, just mentioning that in case you were wondering. So I've actually got one pulled up here and basically you want to just essentially figure out how long that is. Yeah, so you can determine how long in seconds each bit lasts. So in our case, it's going to be about the speed of 0 0.00055 seconds, which is 550 microseconds. Yay, Google does math for me. So <laughs> this ends up being about 1800 bits per second. So not really great. That would be like over an hour for a meg, which we're is not, pretty bad. We're not transmitting <laughs> a meg with yeah, this. It's, it's good enough for a light switch, though. Sure, I mean, sure. yeah, it's, it's fine for a little remote control. Mm -hmm. So now if you've been following along from last week, you know that we can use this interactive Python environment called RFCAT, which is great for doing all sorts of different kinds of testing, especially for this kind of stuff. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up sudo dot slash RFCAT, tack R, and it doesn't find my dongle because I don't have it plugged in. So as soon as I plug in my RF cat, or my, uh, my yardstick one, there boop, it is. I now have uh, the greatest thing since frequency hopping. I have <laughs> my, uh, my interactive Python terminal here with RFCAT. And so the first thing that we're going to need to do, first off, we're going to go ahead and set our frequency using d.setfreq. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll, we're going to use the same frequency that we found on GQRX. I mentioned this because while the FCC documentation said it was at 314 point blah, 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 it was actually. Yeah, you might have to move it around a little bit because each right. one might be a little bit off a few megahertz or a few decimals of megahertz. So we set that D set freak to 31506 0000. Oh. There we go. 
So set it to 315.06 megahertz with the D set frec. Uh, the next thing that you need to do is actually specify that we're going to use on off keying as our amplitude, Look. as our uh, modulation type. So d.set mdm modulation to mod ASK ook. There we go. Uh, and then cool. the, finally, the data rate, which we've figured out to be about 550 microseconds. So for that, we're going to go ahead and set, we're going to do a uh, d.setmdm d rate. And in this case, it's going to be an int, which is 1 over 0 0.000550, paren, paren, close that out. And there we go, set our data rate. And finally, we can actually go ahead and inject the hex values, which we've converted. Uh, so in this case, uh, it's just it's a little long. bit of d.rfxmit, which is actually our transmit uh, command here. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and in, qu in double quotes put uh, backslash x for each hex character. Well, we figured out the first one was 8e. Mm -hmm. And so d.rfxmit will actually transmit these hex values using the parameters that we've set above. And I've gone ahead and added three null bytes to the end since we do want to have that kind of gap in between those signals. Uh, we also, since we know that the receiver may not pick up the very first chirp, uh, we wanted to go ahead and send this a few times. And that's why mm -hmm. I put asterisk 40 uh, to send that binary data 40 times over. So if I just go ahead and press Enter right here, and is the, OK, so the clock is off. And you have the remote, so I'll just. I have the remote. Yep. Yeah, so not let's go ahead. Remote. I'll just I'll sit the remote right there on the clock, and I'll just press enter. Yes. <laughs> All <laughs> That's right. So cool. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Uh, awesome. So I can like turn it off with the remote and press up and press enter. <laughs> that is so satisfying. That's so great. <laughs> and even if we look in GQRX, I can. Yeah, keep, you can see you know, it going. So I'll send this again, and you'll there see it there it goes. Yeah, look at that. That is it's so nice, exciting. Nice strong frequency. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So now going forward, you can see that if we wanted to transmit the off command, it would just be a matter of sniffing up the signal, decoding the binary, and then injecting it again on this frequency. It's the same process that can be used against like doorbells and garage door remotes and keyless entry systems and, and so much whatever good else stuff. you can annoy your friends with. So some things you might want to watch out for, though, which we figured out in our testing, uh, we assume that on off keying was using signals, uh, single and double bits, right, so ones I, and then zero, zero instead right. of zero, zero, zero. Like if I come over here to Audacity, you can see we basically made the assumption that this was a one and this was one, one. Yeah. And as it turns out, this is actually one, 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 which is why <laughs> so we should up measure. With 46 bits instead of 64. So obviously, when we went to transmit the data, that didn't work. Our hex so was way be off. sure to measure out every single one of, in your audio editor so you know exactly how many bits it's supposed to be. Another thing that might get you is that the frequency stated isn't always 100% accurate, like Darren mentioned. So in our case, the signal was off by about 100 kilohertz or so. And finally, when figuring out how fast the data is being transmitted, it's sometimes easier to just try common baud rates like 1200 or 4800 first. Also, don't be surprised if some codes look super, super similar. <laughs> like, it took us a really long time to figure out the difference between the on and off signal on the stupid remote light switch. <laughs> it was only two bits in two different places. And we were sitting there like, why is it this working? It, it's like playing Where's Waldo? <laughs> it and totally you're like, is. which of these two things is different? <laughs> so it's very beneficial to like, write it out or line the waveforms up in Audacity, which was totally my idea. Yeah. So it ended up working out just fine. Get some graph paper out. Get your markers out. Have a yeah. lot of fun with this. This is so much fun. And, and basically, that's it for our Yardstick 1 hack, right? If, if you have any questions, obviously, leave them in the comments. Or you can hit us up directly, feedback at hack5. Dot org. Yay! And of course, if you want to support what we're doing and get yourself some awesome radio equipment like the Yardstick 1 or the RTL SDR that I've got plugged in from our show today or from any other episodes, head on over to our store, which is hakshop.com. Thank you so much. That supports us directly. And if you love this, you can like it, you can subscribe, you can share it with your friends. Let everybody know about Hack 5. And you know, while you're at it, head over to hack5.org or youtube.com slash hack5. And that's where you'll find all of our other episodes and all the other fun shows we do. Uh, with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your Technolust. Bye. I want to hack more things. I know, right? This is so addictive. Ooh, the light switch for the and the is remote this, doorbell. Is that, this remote control? No, that's not. Oh. Automated quintal system. We should hack that later.
in an episode where we go back to 1998. Yes.